Hey there YouTube, and a long time no see, it's been months since I've last done a review, and I chose to come down to Motor Cars in Cleveland Heights, but this time, I'm gonna film something at their Honda store, right across the street from their Toyota store. I want to show you all this 2015 Honda CRV EXL. Uh, this particular one is all-wheel drive, covered up with the Kona Coffee metallic paint finish. In plain English, it's a sparkly dark brown. This EXL isn't quite the top of the line, there's still a another trim level slotted above this. There's an entry LX trim, next up is an EX, this EXL trim, and lastly the Touring model which has everything the CRV has to offer. Uh, the only difference is that with the Touring you get standard 18 inch wheels as opposed to this EXL which has 17 inch wheels. A power lift gate, projected headlamps, adaptive cruise control, lane departure alerts, forward collision alerts, memory seating, and a standard nav system. Navi is an option on the EXL and I I believe it's the only option you can add on to an EXL. For 2015, Honda freshened up the CRV, and those changes are most notable throughout the front fascia, from the grille, headlamps, bumper, fog light region, all of that. They also tweaked the rear, but those changes are more subtle. In addition to the interior, um, I'll get to explaining what took play in there later on in the video. CRV also received Honda's next generation of engines, the Earth Dreams engine family. And yes, you heard right, that's that's just what it's called. The goal with this this engine family is efficiency. Honda improved the VTEC system. In addition, uh, they added direct injection, or at least they did so in the 2.4 liter four cylinder that this CRV has, and it makes 185 horsepower paired to a CVT, continuously variable transmission, which is also a first for this year. Last year's had a five speed automatic. Now, even though this CRV weighs 3,576 pounds and the fact that it's all wheel drive, this new powertrain helps make the CRV one of the most fuel efficient vehicles in its class. 33 miles to the gallon. A comparable Toyota RAV4 XLE all wheel drive can only manage 29 miles per gallon, which isn't bad, but it's still a 4 mile per gallon difference. So, fuel efficiency is one thing to consider when deciding between a CRV and RAV4. The CRV was introduced in the US market for the 1997 year model, a year or two after Toyota had introduced their RAV4, and it was their first mid size crossover. It was also meant to replace their Honda Passport, which was essentially a rebadged Isuzu Rodeo, which was a body on frame SUV. Even then, when it was marketed, it was a very poor seller. But when the CRV came out, it was just a hit from the get go, and it remained a strong seller for Honda ever since then. Hey, look at the smart key slash key phone. Bob lock, unlock, powered liftgate, and panic, but let's just step right back a little bit because this CRV doesn't have a powered liftgate. Um, I suspect that it's originally from a touring model with a powered liftgate, so I have no idea what this is doing here. Um, as I push the button, nothing happens. The CRV is just blinking away, so just ignore this button. I'll have to inform the dealership. So let's finally take a look inside. Now in comparison to last year's model, the interior for the most part carries over. Um, there are little bits and pieces here and there that have have been either replaced or updated, but for the most part, very little changes have taken play. I'll get to explaining later on what those changes are. Um, in comparison to the RAV4, I think the CRV's interior has a more sophisticated and premium look to it. In my opinion, the RAV4's interior is less premium looking. In addition, it has more of a utilitarian look to it. So in other words, it's not as welcoming. The driver's seat looks pretty good. Um, it's well bolstered here on the backrest and somewhat here on the bottom section too. Loving the quality of the leather in addition to the uh, stitching here on the sides. I like the contrast of the white stitching and the black leather. Uh, perforated leather inserts, 10-way powered seat, lumbar support adjustments, backrest, entire seat. Uh, if you can move it back and forth, up or down, and tilt it either in the front or rear sections. So you can have more thigh support and whatnot. The door panel is smothered with this plastic finish, but at least it doesn't have a rough or grainy texture. Armrest and the sides over here are padded. Down below is the door pocket in addition. There's one of the eight cup holders in the door pocket. Now let's not forget these controls, the power mirrors, door locks, window lock, and power windows. Oddly enough, it's only the driver window that has an auto up and down function. The smart key's in my pocket, so push away to start up.
Now again, the interior of the CRV is a very nice place to be in. Everything feels well put together, and you notice that the moment you sit inside of one of these. In addition to the variety of materials that you'll find throughout, the seat is very comfortable, or at least a driver's seat is. The backrest is well bolstered, as well as the bottom section, though the passenger side does lack a powered seat, so it won't be as comfortable as a driver's seat. Though for the most part, thigh support is decent for the driver, thanks to the high seating position. Quality on the dashboard is a plastic finish, and not very pleasant to the touch. But once you go over to the passenger side, things change up to that of a leather finish. You can see the stitching over here, very nice touch. You have the wood grains, but unfortunately, we have more of the plastic stuff again. Around the shifter and down towards the center console. The glove compartment size is pretty average. As you saw, it was damped, and it does have dual latches, so it won't jiggle around even if you happen to drive on the pothole-filled roads of Cleveland. For vehicle infotainment, we have a 7-inch touchscreen display for the Honda Link system, and that's just what Honda simply calls it. And please excuse the fuzziness of the screen, there's a protective laminate on it. The screen does tilt down so you can insert any compact disc, hint hint, CDs. Pretty sure it accepts other formats too on the disc. Uh, to close it back up, just wait a few seconds and it will go back into position. So here's your home screen. We just have these five buttons and very simple layout. Um, I don't have my phone paired to this, so as I press the phone button, nothing happens. It's just prompting that the phone's not paired to it. Next is info, and this basically displays fuel efficiency stats, so you'll be able to witness your instant MPGs, and it also calculates an average. Cool thing here is that it keeps record of your stats, so you'll have a log of your MPGs, and you'll see how the numbers fluctuate as they keep record. Unless you have a lead foot, then you'll, you'll never want to look at this. Next up is your radio. Notice the little display up on the dashboard. This is actually Actually a supplemental display for the Honda Link system and it's quite flexible so you can make it display other things but for now we have it displaying the radio as you can see this thing does have satellite radio specifically XM this thing has a haven of sources too the list is pretty long and it's one of the rewards to having the Honda Link system FM with HD radio AM XM CD USB iPod Pandora aha it's another music streaming service kind of like Pandora but different I think this is for all other mp3 players or Android phones, Bluetooth, and HDMI. And lastly, we have the Link or Honda Link. You need to pair your phone to it in order for this to work. Unfortunately, I did not do that for this review. Navi functions, weather updates, traffic reports, and whatnot, all this information is pulled off from your phone. Quite certain you'll need to have a data plan on your phone in order for this to work. Uh, for the heck of it, let me just show you settings, and this is where you tweak whatever it is you want on here. Camera, notice the lane watch. And these are the settings for a camera that's mounted below the passenger side mirror. And basically you'll get a full screen view of whatever is on your right. Again, there could be a car beside you that you're not aware of, but it'll be hard to miss it if you see it through here. Um, though this is only activated once you flick on the right turn signal or through the push of a button on the turn signal stock. So you can have it going for as long as you want. When the car is shifted into reverse, the backup camera is activated. And notice those guides on the screen. It comes in handy when you're backing into a space and they twist along with the steering wheel. So it gives you a rough idea of where the car will go depending on where you turn. Almost forgot the hazards. The dual zone automatic climate control, it's very straightforward. The rotary dials and buttons feel pretty good and solid. They don't feel like they're going to break off anytime soon, as you can hear it blows pretty hard. Now one thing I don't like is the close proximity of the shifter when it's in park. As you can see, you're a little bit inconvenienced uh, when it comes to pushing some of these buttons because the shifter is in the way, you have to work around it. I think Honda should have put more effort into the placement of the shifter and the climate controls so that uh, it would never be in the way. The shifter itself is a simple work of art. It's not trying to imitate anything, it's just an honest shifter. As opposed to the RAV4s, which badly mimics the gear pattern of that of a German car, along with the fake carbon fiber that surrounds it. Toyota knows better because they did a fantastic job in the Highlander Cameron Corolla, so I don't know why they allowed that inconsistency. The shifter feels pretty good. The insert in the middle is rubber, so your hands won't be slipping and sliding when you try to grip this thing. And again, the CRV has a CVT, Continuously Variable Transmission. Drive, you know, just for normal driving. Drop it in S, it may stand for sport mode. Provides better acceleration, more engine braking and whatnot. And lastly, L, or low. This is what would be your first gear in any other car with a regular transmission. It's just all common sense and familiar for people, so there would be nothing new to learn. 
Moving down towards the center console, there is a power outlet and the seat heater controls for both the passenger and driver seats. Now the center console is one of the things that was completely overhauled for this year. Placement and design of the cup holders and storage compartment is different. In addition to an all new center console armrest, last year's CRV didn't even have a center console armrest. They were seat mounted armrests. The armrest itself is very soft and it slides back and forth so you can better accommodate yourself. Once you open it up, you'll find a fair-ish amount of storage space. Your HDMI port, two USB ports, and another power outlet. The steering wheel is thick, it's leather wrapped, has the side ball strings too, so it feels great in your hands. Your volume controls here to the left. This keypad is what you would use to control the infotainment system, in addition to that other screen on top of the dashboard, so you can make it display other things than the radio. Um, in the future, I will make a video only about the Honda Link system, so you guys can have a better understanding. Below that, we have the hands-free controls. And over to the right is the cruise control. It's all self-explanatory. The intermittent speed wipers along with the rear wiper controls. Back over to the left on the turn signal stock, your headlight switch along with the fog light switch. Pull this latch and the steering wheel tilts and telescopes. At times you may have trouble trying to find the latch, it's quite down there. This eco button helps optimize fuel efficiency. It pretty much tweaks the performance of the engine and transmission along with the climate control so that you'll save fuel. And this button here is to reset the TPMS, the tire pressure monitoring system. And this I believe is for the traction slash stability control. It may also be for the hill start assist, not entirely sure. Back up to the speedometer is this little LCD, which is a readout of your odometer, trip computer, average MPGs, distance to empty, outdoor temperature, and your oil light. Uh, this is a fail. Twisting this pin doesn't seem to do anything. The headliner is somewhat plush. The old crap handles are damped. They won't smack the roof when you release them. Open the shade. Passenger side sun visor has the mirror and vanity light. Flip it outwards so that you can block the sunlight coming in through the sides. The map light for both the passenger and driver. This little pouch is for your sunglasses. In addition, it's a conversation mirror. This slides open the sunroof. Close it back. And this adjacent switch is to tilt the sunroof. The auto dimming rearview mirror sensors are right below. Driver's side sun visor also has a mirror and vanity lights. Okay, so let's finally take a look at the back seat. And this is a fairly comfortable and spacious place to be. In no way those who ride back here will be punished. The headrests do tumble down if you want them out of your way. Actually, the main purpose for them to tip over is so that you can fold the backrest down. Uh, this is 60-40 split fold seating here, so you can have a flat floor. I'll show you a different angle of this later. There's an armrest in the center that folds down. Notice the cup holder and that there's still enough room for your elbow to rest on a soft surface. Legroom is sufficient. My knees aren't touching the backrest of the front passenger seat. Um, thigh support does lack somewhat, but you as the owner slash driver really wouldn't care too much about this. To make things a bit more tolerable, the backrests do recline about two inches, so you can feel better accommodated here. And there is some AC vents in the back of the center console, so you won't melt. Materials on the door panel are the same as up front. Everything's a plastic finish here, but at least the side and the armrest is padded. And there's a cup holder in the pocket, so we found all eight cup holders. The cargo area is spacious, the dimensions are about average in the class, but the CRV is on the larger side of the scale. Now as promised, let me show you what it looks like when the backrests are folded down. Now once they are done, it's obvious that the CRV does have lots of utility. The cargo slash privacy shade does come off, so you can fit large objects, such as a 60 inch TV for example, or a year's supply of toilet paper if you're the type who fears running low of the stuff. Almost forgot this latch over here, which is also meant to fold down the backrest, so you don't necessarily need to pull the strap in the second row. It makes things a whole lot more convenient. Rolling out the cargo shade is self-explanatory. Just pull away and latch on. So if you do have any valuables in here, nobody can snoop inside to look. Some of you guys already remember um, the Toyota RAV4 review I filmed almost a year ago. And this will be a direct comparison to that. Immediately after taking off, I notice such a huge difference. It feels fresher, newer in the ride, the steering, and just the uh, overall way this thing feels out the road. I guess another thing I can say is that it has a more substantial feel. It doesn't feel enormous or tiny. 
This is such a relaxing part to drive. I just feel that this thing does a much better job hugging itself to the ground. So much more composed than the RAV4. Suspension is a bit firmer, but not by much. It's not going to feel harsh in any way. At least I don't think it would. To some, it may very well be a tough ride, but in my opinion, it's not. CRV is very quiet too. Road noise is kept to a minimum. This is probably one of the quietest Hondas I have ever driven. It's just so quiet in this thing. Now, this four-cylinder engine, the Earth Dreams engine, feels potent enough. I just floored it there. Um, again, we are dealing with a CVT, a continuously variable transmission, so it kind of has more of a rubber band effect. Um, it doesn't feel direct, in other words. It doesn't feel like you're going fast up until you look at your speedometer and you're going 40, 50, 60 miles an hour on a 35. Let's put it in sport. It just feels slow. Now it's approaching 40 miles an hour, but it didn't feel like it. That's one thing you need to get accustomed to when you drive a vehicle with a CVT. I prefer a traditional transmission. Love the feeling of gears kicking in. With the CVT, the engine will just redline and stay there up until you relieve your foot off the gas pedal. It's really not a very pleasant sound to listen to, your engine just revving like that. It's far more pleasant the other way around, in my opinion it is. really wish I had the RAV4's six-speed automatic transmission on this instead of the CVT. But this CVT does an acceptable job, so for the average person, you know, they, they, they probably wouldn't care or have any preference. Right now I pushed eco mode, and I immediately noticed that the revs are kept much lower. By the way, this is one of the most fuel efficient SUVs in this class. And this is an all wheel drive car and it hits 33 miles a gallon on the highway. Now I'm pushing that button here on the turn signal stock to activate the side camera. And look, I could see that Crown Victoria right there. I could almost read what it says on its door. And that's so cool. I mean, I think you can leave it on permanently, but it's just more distracting to an extent. But it's a nice feature to have. Say on this turn right now, there could be a bicyclist coming from behind me. I probably wouldn't be able to see him beside me, but this totally changes that. And again, as you saw, it's activated as um, soon as I hit the turn signal to the right, of course. Let's see how the turning radius is in this thing. Oh, not quite as good as my Volvo, but not bad. I have driven far worse. It's okay, in case you guys are wondering. This is really one of the hottest uh, segments right now in the market. The RAV4, CRV, the Escape. Tucson or Santa Fe, I don't know which one of those. There's lots of competition here. Everybody wants a slice of the cake. Both the RAV4 and the CRV nab the biggest slices of it. If you're in the market for a uh, vehicle in this class, definitely add the uh, CRV to your list. You'd be stupid if you don't. In addition, it holds the best resale value, at least better than the RAV4. In the used car market, these things really do have a high resale value. You can't go wrong with this thing. The CRV just does everything very well. If you happen to be in the Cleveland area and you're in the market for a brand new Toyota, Honda, or Scion, come on down to Motor Cars in Cleveland Heights and ask for James Hecker. It's this charming smiley face dude that you see right here, in case you want to know who to look for. He'll be more than happy to sell you this very CRV or any car that you see here. 
And don't forget, Motor Cars is the only Toyota and Honda store in town to offer a free lifetime powertrain warranty on all of their new cars. So if your transmission decides not to shift and your engine begins to tick, tack, knock, sputter, or smoke, just bring it on in and they'll knock sense back into it so everything will be back to normal at no cost to you. So that's one of the perks here. As always, YouTube, thanks for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this tour.